This is an example of an alert investigation app. So what alert investigation means is usually there's when a user signs up for a bank or starts making transactions for a bank, there are, uh, there's a transaction monitoring system or a customer screening system that looks at the data, what's going on, and then it actually uh, sends alerts um, if you know about a customer or about a set of transactions to an analyst. The job of this analyst is to go and investigate those alerts. Um, many times these transaction uh, systems send many false positive alerts. So what happens is maybe 95% of the alerts aren't actually alerts and it's up to an analyst to go sort through all of those and figure out which ones are true alerts and then figure out what to do next. And there could be thousands of alerts that an analyst has to deal with per day. So with Ikigai's AI alert investigation app, what it does is it allows an analyst to basically work much more efficiently. We use our AI cast to actually forecast which alerts are true alerts, and then we can recommend them what to do next or how to screen alerts um, using AI plan and what they want to optimize for. In terms of what they want to optimize for, there's usually a trade-off between do I want to let make it easier to let more people in the system, and if I get more fraud, that's okay, or do I want to you know, make it harder for more people to sign up. Um, and if it reduces fraud, um, that's okay. So with that in mind, I'm gonna walk through this. So first we can look at our data just to get a sense of what's going on. We have data around customer profile, transaction history, historical investigation outcomes with historical false positives. And then what uh, we can do is take those alerts and analysts can hit perform alert investigation and then what Ikigai will do behind the scenes is we use AI cast to actually figure out which ones are alerts and, and why those are alerts. Here first, what we're doing is really saying which features or which columns or parts of the data set are the most predictive or the most important in, in you know, whether something is an alert or whether something is fraud. And here an analyst can go in um, look through the different things that we flagged and everything that's green are, is effectively okay. It's not a true alert, but everything is that's red is something that they should pay attention to. And what you see here is we have identifiers around the transaction in question, profile of the customers, a nationality, what factors are affecting um, Ikigai's AI's um, classification of this as high risk. And then we actually explain what variables have actually led to us establishing this as a true high-risk uh, alert. So for example, it says for the current sample, the incorporation day has a value of 30, it hasn't been incorporated for very long, and so on. So it's a new incorporation, and that's one of the features that makes it look suspicious and we think it's actually true. So with this, an analyst can actually have a much more accurate count um, and work faster through their alerts. Now, that's not the only thing. How you classify an alert as an alert um, really depends on what thresholds you set. Typically, um, an analyst does this either through experience or manually. But what uh, you can do with AI plan is we can generate uh, hundreds of thousands of different scenarios. And what each dot is basically saying is on the on the y axis, we have what's called approval rate. And on the x axis, we have what's called the loss rate. And um, this is basically saying how many people I approve versus how many people I deny. And like I mentioned earlier, you can you know make it easy to approve everyone, and um, but then you might let in a lot of fraud and vice versa. You might want to restrict the most amount of fraud, but then it adds more friction to the user experience to sign up and, and do work. So what I can do is actually go in and choose you know which combination I want. And then what AI plan does is dynamically reweight the features in terms of how it classifies alerts as fraud or classifies true alerts in order to lead to the, the you know the specific outcome that we want in terms of loss rates and approval rates and then one can actually go back and reclassify the alerts based on this